Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we'll cover the scope box tool. It's in the view tab, scope box right there. So what is scope box and wh why would you use it? What is it and how is it going to be implemented into your project? How is it involved in 3D? All of that, we're gonna cover that in this video. So a scope box, let's click on scope box and we're prompted with a name and please name your scope boxes just like everything else in Revit you're gonna hear me say this a million times if you are subscribed please name your views name your scope boxes your reference planes absolutely everything every new family that you duplicate rename it I'm gonna call this scope box video because this is a video imagine that I'll keep the height at 40. I don't need to change that necessarily yet, but I might later on. So really, what is a scope box and what are we using this for? A scope box is used to define a specific set of elements, basically enclose them within a box. The, the elements themselves or anything in or outside of the scope box will not have anything to do with the scope box. It's just a matter of it being in the scope box or outside, whether elements are in or out. And we'll see down the line in this video really the power of a scope box and why you would ultimately use it. So let's cover right now what it is and then we can get into why you might use it. So what is it? It's a box. It's a box. It's a cube. It's going to show up in 3D. It's going to show up in all views by default. So right now I've got this box that I have yet to place, but I'm going to place it over this center core. So I'll just draw a box here. And it's going to show up with dash lines and I'm able to rotate it, push and pull it, do anything like that. And right now I have, if I look at the instance properties over here, I can see the name as well as visible views or views visible. And most of the time you don't need to change this. This is, it's just showing where these scope boxes are going to show up and whether you want them to be visible or not. I typically like for them to be visible and I can you can always change them in the visibility graphics so if you want to override this you can it's not necessarily anything that you need to worry about at this point so I'm gonna just set that aside for now but what we do have now is a scope box and we can see that we have the scope box right there in the green dash lines and if I go to my visibility graphics by hitting VG and go to annotations I can hit S to go down to S and their scope boxes. Again, I can, the only thing I can do is half tone them or just simply not show them. If I uncheck that, I hit apply, you can see that scope box goes away in this view. Whatever, not a big deal, it's just something to be aware of. Now, this works in 3D. Let's go to my default 3D view. I'm in a basic template, there's nothing special about this, there's really nothing to worry about. There it is, it's my cube, it's my scope box, it is where I placed it in plan and 40 feet high because that's what it was by default but it, but honestly that doesn't really matter because I'm at the point now where I just needed to make sure it is around everything I want it to be around and at this point it's, it is just all these walls and everything up to level two so I can even bring this down it honestly doesn't matter at this point so I'll just bring it down a bit just so it's a little more contained it looks a little more normal and at this point, we have the scope box. And I know I keep saying that, but why do you use a scope box and what is it? So a scope box is used to vary the views of plans, section, whatever it might be, to a specific scope box. You can basically say, I want this view to only show this scope box. So if you remember a pre previous video that I did, we went to the Modify tab and we looked at the set a selection box. So that basically says if I select uh, an, any number of elements and I choose the selection box, this selection or the, the view will only move to show those elements. And I'll, I'll do that as an example. I can select these elements and if I choose selection box, I'm gonna get a box that shows that it's around all those elements. So in a way that's like a scope box, but of course it's not. But what I'm, the reason I brought this up is that I'm going to undo that. But the reason I brought that up is the scope box is going to allow you to perform and, and mold views and change the borders of views in a similar way to the selection box. 
Now this doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now yet until I come over here and I, you can do this in any view, which is really the powerful part of scope boxes. So if I choose, you can see over here in the, the extents of the view, I've got a crop view, the, the region, it's not visible, the annotation crop, none of that is checked. I don't have any of that. But when I come down here, I see scope box is none and section box is none. So nothing's on, we're seeing everything in 3D at this point. What I can do now is change this scope box from none to scope box video. In this case, that's the actual scope box. And what this will do is do something very similar to the selection box. It's gonna force the view to only show the extents of that, that scope box. So let's change that to scope box video. And as soon as I do that, the entire view is squished down to the extents of that scope box. And the nice part about that as well is if I choose the scope box, which I, I don't believe I can in this view, I can't just because it's right there. It, it is the extents of the view. So let's put that at none. And at this point, everything's gonna stay where it is, but now I can select that scope box. I can push it down if I want, and then I can reapply that to the view, and we can see that the view is squished down as well. Again, you could see how this can be very helpful in determining certain views that you wanna see in certain views, certain sheets, whatever it might be. Now, what is the real reason why you might use a scope box? Well, the real reason is, let's say you have a continuous core on every single level of your building. Well, maybe you have multiple plans and you don't just have one plan to show it. Maybe there's some slight variation in each one of those cores on every level of your building. Well, you don't want to have to just go make another plan and you know push and pull the extents of the view like this. I'll, I'll go ahead and show my crop region and maybe I want to see this core in every single view and I can push the, the view in just like this all the way. Instead of having to do that on every single level, on every single floor plan, all you really need to do is, I'm in a floor plan, you can go to the scope box, change that to your scope box, and it's going to you're going to get the exact same dimensions for your view on every single plan that is applied to the scope box because it's all applied to the scope box. And so another reason you might use a scope box for something like that is that it has the capability of going as high as you need it to go. So if you have a 20-story building, you can make this scope box that high and let you know if your core goes that high which it would then you can change all those views on every single level to morph to that perfect size every single time so that was a quick rundown of scope boxes what they are where you might use them and how to use them make sure to name them everything like that they will show up in 3d so you, you will get to the point where if you have a bunch of different scope boxes they're gonna show up in 3D everywhere. And as you can see also, the scope boxes don't necessarily care about where, they, they don't care about, I'll just duplicate this here, go back to my 3D. They don't care about what you're showing in the view. In this case, you're gonna see every scope box everywhere regardless of the crop of the view. So just be aware of that. So a lot of times I like to just not show them in 3D views for this reason because it can be overwhelming once you set them up in initially for your views. This it's going to be a little bit of a mini series so in this case I've this is scope boxes and in the next video I'm going to cover making dependent views and that's basically just making one view and splitting it up into multiple views and finally in the third video I'll cover match lines and how match lines are used to put both of those views together so, so all of this comes together because you have to use scope boxes to do this all appropriately and correctly and to make it work just seamlessly. So this is kind of part one of a little mini series, but what I covered in this video was scope boxes. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Also subscribe. I love having new subscribers. That always helps. And I, I, that tells me that I'm doing something good for you. I hope you all have a wonderful day and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.